Welcome to another Bible study walkthrough um, here at Above Reproach Ministries. If you are wanting to learn how to read and study the Bible, I do believe you've come to the right place, and I don't say that arrogantly, um, because I believe along this journey, in this video, you're going to learn some helpful Bible study techniques and ways to approach the scriptures that maybe you're unfamiliar with, or maybe you are, and these will this video will sharpen those skills a little more. If you didn't know, we have a completely free 40-day Bible study program linked in the description below. A 27-day and an 11-day program, it's all self-paced. You'll go very in-depth into learning how to read and study the Bible, and it's free. Again, it's in the description below and on our website at AboveReproachMinistry.com. Verse 10 of Hebrews chapter 1 is where we are. Okay, if you'd like to open your Bibles, you can, um, or you can just follow along with me. Now, before we start reading, um, I'm going to give you some context real fast. The author of Hebrews is making the case that Jesus is better than angels, and he's using Old Testament references and quotations from the Psalms to further his case. Okay, so that's what we have in verse 9, is he references Psalm chapter 45 um, to make the case that Jesus is superior to angels. Now in verse 10 it says, and, and is a connector word. In other words, this will either add to what we've seen in the verse in verse nine somehow and further the point or it'll con be a continuation of sorts in the sense that we're about to get another quotation okay and i do believe we're about to get another quotation that's pretty obvious because there's quotes around the text when you read the bible um and uh, the bible references itself somewhere or a new testament or old testament author references somewhere else in the scripture take note of that okay and that's what's happening here. We have an and connecting this reference with this reference. In other words, it's a continuation of the idea God speaks uniquely to the Son compared to the way he speaks about angels. And this verse will further that idea. And God is speaking to the Son again. You, Lord, laid the foundation of the earth in the beginning. Okay, now, if you haven't been tracking with us, that's fine. But I want you to note something. This is what I do when I read the Bible. This concept of laying the foundation of the earth in the beginning. Or essentially, Jesus being a part of creation in some sense. Have we seen this idea already? Okay, this is what I do when I read the Bible. I, I, I meditate and I think through, hey, have I seen any anything relating to creation or Jesus being a part of creating the universe or the world so far in Hebrews chapter 1? Have I seen anything like that? And I can tell you absolutely we have back in verse um, 3. Back in verse 3. Or verse 2 rather. The Son is appointed the heir of all things through whom God actually is the one who created the world through the Son. So the Son is there at creation, creating the world. Uh, it's a partnership with the Father. Um, but also, the Son upholds the universe by the word of His power. So I, I see two um, almost pointers to creation or the world at large. And I want to take note of that. So maybe what I'll do right here is I'll go, hey, let me reference verse 2 and verse 3 for this concept of laying the foundation of the earth. And the reason I want to pay attention to repeating ideas and patterns like that is because the scriptures are very, very dense. They're deep. They're like a bottomless well of truth. Um, God is very intentional behind what he leads his biblical authors to write down and the way it's written down and constructed. In other words, there's intentionality, there's structure, um, there's cohesiveness. It's beautiful. And it's on us to discover that when I read the Bible, I want to pay attention to things like that. But also, since I've seen the concept of, of creation or the world being mentioned, you know, like in verse 3, what I want to do is think about how this verse might further elaborate on that idea of creation or Jesus being there at the foundation of the world and, and, and let that build a picture for me. Um, so he's there laying the foundation of the earth in the beginning. So I would, I would read it like this. If I go back to verse two and three, I see that Jesus or the father is creating the world through the son. Now this gets more specific. He's, this is actually Jesus laying the foundation of the, of the earth in the beginning. So this doesn't 
highlight the Father doing it through the Son. This actually highlights Jesus being referred to as Lord by the Father. Jesus here is the one doing the creating rather than just being the method of creation. In verse 2 and 3, we saw he's the method of creation, whereas here in verse 10, he's the one doing it. This is an action word, lang, that is attributed to the Son, okay? So this gives us another dimension of that idea of creation that wasn't there previously in verse 2 and 3, okay? This is the author unpacking the idea slowly over time in a way that we can uh, actually, um, I guess, keep up with. So it's in the beginning, too, to, to note that Jesus actually pre-exists whatever you believe time to be, um, whether it has a beginning or not, some people think it doesn't. But the point is um, that Jesus is there in what is called the beginning, pre-existing the earth itself. Okay, so this makes the, the case even stronger that Jesus is, is better than angels. Okay, so we don't necessarily know the origin story of angels, but we do know they have a beginning. They are created beings. Jesus here doesn't seem to be that. He's there doing the creating of all things, like we see in Colossians chapter 1. And he creates the heavens here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to underline that. But the heavens here are referred to as the work of his hands. Okay, so what I want to do is think about how this phrase, the work of your hands, how it, you know, clarifies Jesus doing creation. It's one thing to say Jesus laid the foundation of the earth, but the author is going to say the same thing in a different way this time and say, well, the heavens are the work of your hands. That doesn't mean the earth is not the work of his hands. It's just communicating that idea in a different way that might resonate with different people. So it's on us to keep tabs on that and go, hey, this seems like the same idea. And that's exactly true. The author is just communicating it in a different way. And so what I would do here is I'd go, hey, he's essentially said Jesus is here creating. That's the first time. And then another time right here. And again, this is a reference. So what we have right here, if I can break out my handy dandy reference, is Psalm chapter 102. So what I'll do, since this Bible doesn't have a, a cross reference um, section, I'll just put Psalm 102. And I believe it's verse as 25 through 27. So I'm going to mark that down so I can go back and reference it later. Okay. Um, this is just what I do. I'm not telling you to do this, but you might do a version of this. So the reason I point out the fact that the author is repeating the same idea in, a diff in two different ways is because that gives us, um, that becomes like, uh, I guess, uh, a clarification to us that this is a very important point the author's trying to make. When, when, when the Bible repeats something, not just the same word or the same verbiage, but the same idea in, a two, in two different ways or three different ways or you know over and over, you should really mark that and pay attention to it. Because since I've seen this idea already put forth in verse 2 and 3, since I see this idea repeated twice here in this verse by referencing Psalm 102, there's emphasis on Jesus creating. So that tells me this. When I read the Bible, I don't just want to notice, hey, that's cool. It's a repeating idea. I want to do something with it and go, I'm going to pay attention for this as I continue reading the rest of this chapter or the rest of the book. Now my antennas are up and I'm intentionally looking for and paying attention for any verbiage that, you know, um, references creation or the earth or the heavens being created, stuff like that. They will perish, but you remain, okay? So let me do this for you. This word but, when you read the Bible, pay attention to the but, it's noting a contrast. What's being contrasted here is the they, which I'm going to highlight in orange actually so we're not confused, they is being contrasted with you. Who's the you? Well, who's being referred to? Who's being spoken to? God is speaking to the Son. That's the Lord here, right? Well, what's the they? Well, the they here are the heavens and the earth, right? I can just go back and note that. So what's being contrasted here is the Son 
Jesus with creation. Do you see the contrast? So it's on us to notice that and go, wow, Jesus is being contrasted with creation. Now that I recognize that, I want to ask how or in what ways are they being contrasted? What, what are the differences that we're supposed to recognize? Well, they perish. So I'm going to highlight that in orange, okay? But you remain. The author wants you to see that Jesus here is distinct from creation. It's pretty obvious. The heavens and the earth, Genesis chapter 1, that is a, is a sum total statement for the world as it is. Jesus is on a different level than creation itself and the world as we know it. Because the earth and the heavens will what? They'll perish. But what's different about Jesus? He remains. Okay? Now, I want you to notice something. If you didn't watch the last video, you, you wouldn't really know this. But this is technically, at least in, in the last four or five verses, this is the third contrast we've seen. This is the third. Jesus is being compared to the heavens and the earth. In verse 9, we have the second one. Jesus here is anointed beyond his companions. So he's being compared to his companions, right? And and, and again, I, I keep note of this. I want to read slow enough to pay attention to this to really pay attention to what the author is trying to communicate. And I see that Jesus is more superior to angels in verse 4. That's the third comparison I've seen. And I, I just want to take note of that because it seems like the author has repeatedly compared Jesus to something, right? And when I take note of that, I want to pay attention to now that I see that, I want to look for and be aware of. I want to have it on my radar as I read and pay attention to the fact that, you know what? He's compared Jesus quite a bit to other things. I should really look for that in future verses, not read it into the text, but at least have that at the front of my mind and be ready to recognize it, right? So this is the first difference between Jesus and the heavens and the earth is that they're temporary, they're fading, they're perishing, they don't last. He does, okay? Now, they will all wear out like a garment. This word like, when you read the Bible and you see the word like, 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 I see it three times. I want to say two things about this. Two things. First thing, when you see a word repeating, pay attention to it. The word like three times in one verse tells me there's an analogy being given. Several analogies. This is a very analogous statement. Meaning, something about Jesus or, or the heavens and the earth are going to be compared to other things. They're going to be likened to, like, likened to what? Um... Let me grab my pink, my pink pen. They are like a garment. They are like a robe. They're like a garment again, right? So the word like tells me there's a similarity or a parallel being drawn. They're being compared. The heavens and the earth are being compared to a garment, but I shouldn't assume in what way they're being compared, I should figure that out and let the text speak for itself. So when I go, oh, the heavens and earth are like a garment, God wears them, and then I go, what a deep revelation. That's not the parallel being drawn. He tells you in what way it's like a garment. They will all wear out like a garment. Garments, clothes, wear out. They don't last forever. Wear and tear, right? In the same way, the earth and the heavens wear and tear. They're not going to last forever. Oh, Okay, so that's one, one comparison. The second one, like a robe, you will roll them up, right? Just like you would fold and put away laundry, I guess is the best way I can think of that. But the you here is Jesus rolling up the heavens and the earth. So, so watch this, and I want you to pay attention. When you read the Bible, you, you pay attention to things like this. And I want to think through this with you guys. The first time in verse 10, I see Jesus and the heavens and the earth in one statement, it's that Jesus 
he's before the heavens and the earth. The heavens and the earth. He pre-exists it, right? He's before it. But here, he's the one rolling them up. He's there after. He's, he's there at the end of it. So in other words, you're supposed to see Jesus here as being different from the heavens and the earth and all creation in the sense that he's before creation and he's after creation. He's the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He's eternal. He pre-exists it all, right? And he's there at the end. His years has, have no end. That's what it's going to say here. Here's the third comparison. Like a garment, they will be changed. Changed. So this is what I want you to recognize when you read the Bible. I've already seen the word garment used right here. I'm going to circle it right here. So what I want to do is I want to draw an arrow between the two and note garments are referenced twice. The heavens and the earth are compared to a garment twice. Why would he repeat the same idea? He doesn't. He actually expands on that idea. First, he says, heavens and earth will wear out. Okay, so when you read the Bible and you notice the same word or the same idea being, being repeated, pay attention to why it's being repeated and maybe each consecutive time it's used, what is being explained about it? What's being further elaborated on? What, what characteristic is being added to that picture? For instance, the first time the garment is referred to, it's that the heavens and earth wear out. But now they're being changed the second time a garment's being referenced. So this either tells me that there's um, going to be two different experiences for the heavens and the earth, or it tells me this. The word changed is actually what he means when he says that they wear out. <coughs> We think of wear out as like, I'm going to toss them away. I'm done with them. But actually, the wearing out is clarified here in the sense that they're changed. Okay? So, God isn't completely done with the heavens and the earth as if to just disregard them and uh, you know destroy it altogether with nothing remaining. It's like he's changing garments. He's going to change the heavens and the earth into something new. So, the way that I come to that conclusion is because the garment is referenced twice. I'm trying to give you my line of reasoning. And then I pay attention to that and go, oh, is he, is he making the same statement both times about the garment? Well, well, kind of. The first time he says they wear out. The second time he says they're changed. So therefore, and you can, you can always look up in the Greek lexicon, what is the word changed here, right? This is my encouragement to you when you read the Bible and you're going, wow, what, what does that mean? Go look it up. But also let the context, the surrounding context, give you clarity on what the word means, not just the Greek lexicon and where other passages use that same Greek word. Let the context give you a clear understanding of how that word's being employed. This is their being changed, but, there's another but. Uh, where's my yellow highlighter? Here's another contrast being drawn, right? You are the same. Your years have no end, right? So the first contrast was that Jesus remains, they perish, right? And the second contrast between Jesus and the heavens and the earth is going to further elaborate on that idea that he remains when heavens and earth perish, but he's going to state it differently. In other words, sometimes you'll see the biblical authors repeat the same idea in a bunch of different ways or repeat the same idea and each time they repeat it, they're adding another dimension to it. Right? So the first time, they just perish. But now, the second time, he's going to clarify what it looks like for them to perish. Or what it looks like for Jesus to remain. He's going to say it a different way. His years are the same. His years have no end. Right? But the heavens and the earth will be changed and rolled up like a garment. By who? By the one who pre-existed it in the first place. So he's there bringing it into existence, and at the end, when they wear out, he's there changing them into what is going to be referred to as the new creation, the new heavens and the new earth, right? Because Jesus' years have no end. That's how he's better than angels. That's the point being drawn. Don't get caught up in the, in, in the weeds here. Remember, the main point is Jesus is better than angels, and the author is furthering that point, making that case by saying, look, 
Jesus is actually going to outlast the heavens and the earth, and he pre-exists it. Spiritual beings like angels can't say that because they are created. And there's the likelihood that even rebellious angels, they will have an end contrasted with Jesus who does not. And I want to pay attention to that when I read the Bible. I want to pay attention to, to the word but. I want to pay attention to the word like. When you notice the word like being used and go, oh, an analogy is being drawn here. Don't assume to know what the analogy is specifically pointing out. Let the text speak for itself. Figure it out by reading. That's my encouragement to you. I hope you've gotten some helpful Bible study tips today, and I didn't just waste your time. I'll see you guys in the next Bible study walkthrough. Thanks for watching.